brand personality. By the end of this short video, you should be able to assess the different personalities that brands have and identify some of the methods and techniques that we used to help create different brand personalities. Okay, let's try and look back at some of the things we've done in previous lessons and see how many of these questions you can actually answer. You're probably going to pause the video now and try and jot down your answers. So question one, what is a brand? Question two, what is the purpose of developing a brand? Question three, what is the method of promotion called that is used to protect and enhance the brand image? And question four, what is meant by the term target market? Pause the video now, jot down some answers, and then we'll go through them quickly now. Okay, hopefully for a brand you've got something like it's a unique identifiable feature. You could have had it's a company, a product, a service, a logo, an image, a slogan. They're all keywords we looked at which identifies brands. What's the purpose of developing a brand? You may have got something like it gives them a unique selling point, it enables them to stand out, it enables them to add value and make their product worth more money. The method of promotion that we looked at in previous lessons that's used to protect and enhance the image is typically known as PR or public relations. Remember we talked about how you can use it to try and enhance your image, sending out press releases about new ideas and products and features that companies have developed. And protecting ideas it can be used the same way to respond to negative stories and obviously contact the press and try and manage and limit the damage that any negativity or any negative stories could do to your overall company and organization. And of course lastly, we said what is meant by the term target market. Well target market is the group of individuals or group or target audience that you're looking at who've got the same or similar characteristics and interests who you feel will be targeted or applicable for your product or service. Remember that these are the people who we aim our product at because we don't want to aim at everybody because it might be too expensive or they may not have an interest in our product which obviously poses a question, is there such thing as junk mail? Or is it actually just poorly targeted mail? You can decide on that one. Okay, there's a quick recap. Let's move on to today's lesson. So let's start by thinking, what do I actually mean when I say the term personality? Pause the video, have a think about it. What do we mean by that term personality? Hopefully, you're thinking that a personality is something along the lines of the characteristics or the qualities that form an individual's distinctive character. The things that make us all unique our personality, what things we do. So clearly, in this case here, B has got its own personality. That may be similar or different to my personality away from the microphone. But of course, personality in general are those characters and those qualities that make us distinctive. Personality. Why do you think that companies go to such lengths to try and create a brand personality? Pause the video now, jot down some answers. Then we'll look at some of the answers now. Brand personality. Brand personality is quite simply the characteristics and qualities that the consumer, the customer, can relate to to a specific brand. It's taking a brand and making it into a person. Because when it becomes real, we the consumer start to develop more loyalty to it and more reputation to it. And we can relate to it. And it's that relation and that loyalty that makes all the difference and the key features we want to be. So why do companies and brands go to such lengths to create a brand personality? Well, normally it's to differentiate from their competitors. You want to be different. You want to have that unique selling point. Because when you differentiate, you're able to add value. And of course, by adding value, you get a greater return in your profit margins. Typically, though, it's about developing loyalty. Loyalty enables you to add that value. Loyalty enables you to actually diversify into new products and services. So when you think about different brands like the JCB brand, which managed to go from being an agricultural farming industry into clothing and into mobile phones, and there's many more brands out there. As soon as you stick that name on it, Tesco, great example. Tesco was a, a, the ideal brand when it came to grocery shopping, but then they moved into the mobile market. And then they moved into the banking market. And you see how they keep moving at these markets. And it's all because the brand has got a personality. When you see that brand, you relate to it. And you have certain key characteristics that stand out. And that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, let's try and think of the B Business B brand. 
So if I ask you now, what adjectives, descriptive words, can come to mind when you see the brand image that I've created for B Business B that's all over this page now, the B and the logo style? What age do you think that brand is actually? If it was a person, what age is it? Not who is it aimed at, but what age is that brand? If you looked at that person now as a B Business B and thought, right, you're going to be a certain age. What gender would you put on there? And I'd rather you, rather sit on the fence and say it's mixed, what gender do you think B really is? What does it fit into? Pause the video now, jot down some answers, and then we'll have a look at some of the answers. And remember, there's probably no right or wrong answer. It's just see how close you are to the things that, that I was thinking about. And obviously in class, the people who are with us today, they will obviously have come up with some of these keywords as well. So we know there's some similarity and some difference. Pause the video now. Okay, hopefully, for B Business B, you've come up with some of the similar words to myself. That means I must be successful, because I've been thinking along the right lines. So the adjectives that I thought typically describe B Business B could be fun. I think that the brand looks fun. Why does it look fun? Think about the reasons why. Hope for the colour scheme. Look at the, the logo, the cartoon use of the logo. The way it's designed, the fact that the colour scheme is a simple, very in-your-face, but it's aimed to be, be fun. I would say it's unique, it's different. B business B, alliteration, it's, it's something totally different. It's, out, it's different from what you'd expect. It's not really the same style, the same theme that you get from other revision sites or other business sites. I'd like to think it's trendy. I'd like to think that people want to be part of that image. You know, the, the fact we've got the umbrella, the ties, all that image all builds into, we're trying to build this trendy, fashionable idea. People want to be part of B business B. You want your B cards. You want to get your B points. It's all those things that try and build on that. You want to subscribe to the channel. You want to follow it on Twitter. I'd like to think that the word knowledgeable appears there and informative and maybe even helpful because we help you out along the way. These are all words that I would hope that you think you're linking into the brand and you're buying into that personality. There's probably many more. I mean, I've heard so many more different words being thrown in throughout the day and the lessons we've covered. But these are some of the words that hopefully you're latching onto and thinking that's what the personality of B Business B is. If I'm being quite honest, looking at the image, I would say that probably B is the image and the way I create it is designed more 11 year olds. But as we've already identified, really, it's a slight problem there. People have been saying all day to me because the target audience really is going to be 14 to 18 year olds and maybe teachers. And yet I've got something there pitched probably looking more 11 year olds that go for the colour scheme. That probably means that we need to look at the brand and the whole image that we're coming across and where we pitch at. What gender? I would like to think that B comes across as male, B myself. However, the reality is, you could say B is more female, but the original idea was that B was going to be pitched more towards the male audience. Hopefully, you're thinking now, yeah, that makes sense. I can understand where you're going with that with brand personality. Best way to think about it is, have a go yourself. Okay, obviously in lesson, what I did was I gave you pairs, and I gave you different brands, and you had to assess the personality of your brand. So you had to think about what adject adjectives came to mind, when you saw the brand, what age did you think the brand was as a brand? And what gender do you think the brand would be if it was a person? Clearly, it's a bit harder to do it in pairs when you're on the video. But what I've done is I've given you one in yourself. You have a go at it, and then we do another one afterwards. So firstly, there is Poundland. What I'd like to do now around Poundland is literally write down all the adjectives, the descriptive words that come to mind when you see that brand Poundland. All the words. If it is a person, what would Poundland be? What words would it be? What age is it? What gender would it be? And just scribble all those things down around it on a piece of paper. Just pause the video, scribble them down, and then unpause it in a minute, and we'll look at the answers. Pause the video now. Okay, these are just some of the ideas that I chucked in there. Some of these might be true, you might agree with them, some of them you might totally disagree with. I thought Palom was a fun brand. It looks fun. The, the whole image when you go in there looks fun. It's, it's not really a serious brand. I'd say the cheap comes there. It's definitely a cheap brand. You could argue that it offers value. That's quite critical. Everything you see in the shop is all about value. They build that image about value. Discounts. They offer discount. Good deals. Good offers. You see lots of buy one, get one free. You see lots of the three for a pound idea. You know, they, they try and chuck it in there. Strangely enough, it's all about trying to spend more money. I would say that some parts of the logo look loyal, like the pound coin idea, the, the more traditional look at the end of it all. It's, it looks more loyal. Look at the way that the logo is designed. It's... It, it's definitely a traditional idea with a low idea. It looks more trusted. But then at the same time, as you look like that, you go in the shop, it's quite vibrant colours. It's quite trendy colours. It's in your face. It's quite fashionable at the moment to be in Poundland, the shopping in Poundland. That's a bit of a conflict there, but it's busy. It's laid out. So as a person, 
I would say that Poundland is a very creative person. They're, they're out there, but overall they're quite trusted, they're quite honest, and they're, they're an individual that stands out. And of course, I would say there's an age on it. It's quite interesting because an age, it looks like somewhere older. But at the same time, it also caters for a younger audience. And that's why perhaps Poundland is one of these unique brands which has got no distinct age on there. It appeals to young, it appeals to old, it appeals to middle age. As a person, I would argue it's male because males like to shop, they're quite basic, they're in your face, you want to get in there and get out as quick as you can. And I'd say that's why Poundland is a classic example of male rather than female. OK, hopefully that made some sense. Do exactly the same now for Nike yourself and see what you come up with. And then, share it with a friend, send it over by email to a friend, see what they do. I've got no answers for this one for you, just want you to have a go at seeing what you think Nike's going to be. Discuss it, share it, and do it. Pause the video now. OK, that's it. You should now be able to assess the different personalities that different brands have and identify some of the different methods and techniques that are used to create that brand personality. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, it's at BBusinessB, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you've got any more questions, don't forget you can always post them underneath here or email me and I'll get back to you with the answers and try and help you to prompt you with the thoughts. But that's what we covered today in lesson about brand personality, but it's great to use it any time you want to for a quick recap.